Hey guys, it's Dr. Black. So over the years, there have been many great superhero films, both animated and live action. Many which I would call perfect, but there are those select few that makes you want to jump out of your seat waiting to see what's going to happen next. So here are my top 10 comic book movies of all time. Before we get started though, take these rankings that you're going to solve because, you know, besides maybe like the top three, it's hard to put a definitive ranking to all these, so they're all like relatively interchangeable for the most part. Also, I'm not a professional reviewer or anything like that, so most of these are going to be like short reasons for why I like them. It's just going to be a, you know, quick little explanation. So let's begin. And number 10, Deadpool. I still remember seeing this for the first time in theaters. It's not often I actually laugh at superheroes, but one of those, of course, being Deadpool, I found this movie funny. But not to mention the casting choices. I don't think anyone could be more perfect for Deadpool than Ryan Reynolds, the man himself. I'm so glad he got a chance to redeem himself after this monstrosity. I personally always prefer to more badass hype scenes and characters over consistently funny characters, but Deadpool is an exception. The interactions with Colossus was hilarious, and Deadpool is also just a really fun move, movie, just a really cool character. Number 9. This one might be a little surprising to a lot of people, but V for Vendetta is my number 9 pick. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Such a good movie. I will admit, I've only seen the movie for this, I've never read the comics, but I love this movie so much. Lee is such a likable and pr interesting protagonist to follow. Seeing him versus the government expose them, being that vigilante character, but still makes you question him, that's what I like. The fight choreography, the fights itself, and the movie are badass too. I also love the setting. Most superhero movies take place in like New York or some New York type setting, but I love that he's in London. It's cool. And I've always thought London was a very beautiful place, so it's very cool to see these kinds of, um, you know, this kind of setting. Like I said, though, I absolutely love he's not your typical vigilante type character. He's not like that, oh, I'm going to fight crime off the streets guy. No, he's a literal terrorist trying to fight against the government and expose them for the oppression they put England through. If you haven't seen this movie, please watch it. I love it. I actually like how they make the politics stance work in this. I cannot stand when politics are brought into superhero films, but it works so well here because his actual what is fighting against when there's some random political message they try to squeeze in like all these other superhero shows. However, it's not perfect. There are a few issues I have with it. I'm not sure if this scene is in the comics, but when V tortured Irie, I didn't really like that scene. It didn't really make any sense to me. Like, I get he was trying to, trying to um, have help her get over fear or whatever, but like, come on, dog. Surely there's a better way. I mean, shit. Like, she also, she also eventually forgives him for putting her through that, an event so traumatizing you have to be checked in damn Arkham Asylum. At number eight... I have the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. I mean, it's just a classic. How could you not like it? Now, controversial opinion here, but Andrew Garfield is the best Spider-Man. He has the worst movies out of the big three, but he's got the um, best Spider-Man. But Tobey, though, he still he still kills in the role, and he still has one of the greatest uh, superhero movies of all time. This movie especially is dear to my heart. Maybe I'm putting it here because of nostalgia, because I grew up with this movie. It came out right around the time I was born. It's been a long time since I've really seen it, but even to this day, I still remember it in, in a lot of detail. Uh, I don't have a lot, a lot to say about this one, because I haven't seen it in a long time, but like I said, it is definitely up there for one of the best. It's just a classic. And number seven, Avengers Endgame. I'm sure this is no surprise to a lot of people on this top list, but for me, it was kind of disappointing, at least in some regards. One of my biggest complaints in this movie is they ruined Thor. Thor is a top-tier Avenger, and me personally, I don't find it funny at all to make him this sad, pathetic, virgin-ass Fortnite comic guy from the Simpsons type character that sits around and plays Fortnite. A group of writers actually sat down and thought they were themselves. Hey guys, wouldn't it be hilarious to have Thor play Fortnite with Noob Master 69? LOL, yes, that'd be funny. That'd be so hip with the kids. That is so funny. <laughs> like, I don't know. It actually bothers me because it should have been a sad story. Like, for Thor. Like, my man lost his dad, his mom, his brother, his sister, his home, his hammer, his eye, his friends. Literally everything he could have lost. And it could have been such a good depression arc. Where we really feel for him and actually care to see where his character will go from here and how he will find it in him to keep on fighting for what it is that he has to, what he has lost. But nope, um, we gotta we gotta have him play Fortnite because that's hilarious and hit with the kids. And in 2023, apparently, despite the fact that game fell off in 2019, anyways, it also just could have been way shorter. Like seriously, I'm a funny guy. I feel like 
I, I I appreciate humor, but Marvel movies, especially this one, has a bad case of forced humor. Not every movie needs to be funny. It takes away from the tension, in my opinion. Like, Thanos literally won, and they lost half of the world, and had to watch all of their friends die. Why is the Hulk making taco memes? <laughs> and you got that hilarious scene where Scott becomes a baby. baby. <laughs> it's Scott! Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. <sighs> oh, you guys. Those writers at Marvel, they sure are funny. This should have been a sad, dark film. That's all I'm saying. And to me, these are the reasons not higher on the list. Despite that, though, this movie is still amazing. Don't get me wrong. The action is absolutely incredible. The final fight scene is amazing. Seeing Captain America use Thor's hammer, that was an orgasmic. I mean, I still remember my initial reaction sitting in the movie theater just jumping out of my seat on that scene. And a lot of other people are in the The whole movie theater went crazy when that happened because it was just such an uh, incredible scene. Seeing Thor wield two hammers as well, that was so cool. Iron Man's sacrifice, the time travel stuff was super cool. I especially love the part where they go to find Doctor Strange, and the Asian one says, you're about five years too early. That scene was epic. But overall, this movie is good, but it's not perfect. But from an enjoyment perspective, because of the good parts, I would I would still put in my top ten, at least for now. Uh, um, uh, um, oh. Sorry guys, I was just delicious. I was just munching on some delicious pizza. Future Zach here. I just listened to the audio. That sounds so gross. You can hear all the moisture in my mouth. I'm sorry about that. Anyways, at number six we have Infinity War, the far superior part. This movie is damn near perfect. And I'd say it's the third best MCU movie ever. The movie, the final wins. Dude, I'm writing. I'm reading my script here, and I, I you know, at the awkward moment when you can't read what you literally just fucking wrote. I literally just wrote this, and I can't even comprehend what I just wrote. What is wrong with me? It's like the Akka moment when you go uh, present in front of the class, and you can't even read your own handwriting. Maybe I'm the only one that's been through that, but anyways. At least where the villain actually wins. Like, that is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> and it was really shocking when that happened the very first time at theaters. I still remember waiting for the part where they come back, and Thanos loses. Deep down, you know they will, but when the movie just ends, you think, Oh my god, is this really it? The stakes are just so high in this movie. I actually like how Star-Lord fucks up the whole plan to defeat Thanos. A lot of people meme on that, but I think it actually fits his character and it works for the scene. Unlike Thor cracking Fortnite jokes. I'm sure I, I, I don't really need to explain more to you guys why this movie's awesome. Everyone likes this movie. Number 5, Flashpoint. The Flash is my favorite DC superhero, and the Flashpoint comic is one of the greatest comic books I have ever read personally. This movie does not disappoint at all. I can't tell you guys the good memories I have watching this movie and talking about it with my friends back in the old days of high school and middle school. It's just a fun movie. As someone who loves time travel and seeing how the future could change by changing past event, even... A uh, past event has always fascinated me, and I don't know about you guys, but personally, when I watch a movie like this or like the Back to the Future trilogy, it makes you question and really think about how this stuff could work in real life, and in the butterfly effect is even possible. I don't know though, maybe I'm the only one who overanalyzes and thinks about a superhero movie and how it could work in real life. I'm weird, I know, but everything about this movie is perfect. Everything about this movie is perfect, from the animation to the character interactions. I haven't seen this movie in years, but I'll never forget that incredible reverse flash quote. Remember when you were making out with your first girlfriend, and you came right as she touched your leg? Oops, not that one. I just wanted to save her. Her hero. How noble. Oh, wait. You didn't stop JFK from getting assassinated. Or make sure Hitler stayed in art school. You saved your mommy. There we go. Her. It's just a good quote. It really hammers into, into you just how much power the Flash could even wield. The war with Aquaman and Wonder Woman 2 was done so well. It was just such a great idea anyways. They adapted really well. It's also one of the few superhero movies that I can think of at least where the main hero doesn't win. Even even in the end, as um, the main cause of the whole issue in the film, he's got to fix that now. He's literally the reason why it even happens. And I love that. It makes the characters more relatable when they screw up and you got to fix it. At the end of the film, he still doesn't even get his mom back. And of course, he has to... And he has to fix it. And if the live-action Flashpoint movie ever comes out, if it ever comes out, Ezra Miller doesn't get fired, seriously, that man is actually crazy. He needs to be locked away, far from humanity, and never to be seen again. But if this movie does get a live-action adaption, I really hope it does become like the comic books and they use that to reset the universe. Now for the big reason. Thomas Wayne Batman. Just like the comics, see to see him was... 
fucking epic. Such a cool concept, and he's just such a really cool character to take that darker take on Batman, making me more broken and darker. I love Thomas Wayne Batman. I would love to see him in the live action. There's really nothing bad to say about this movie, honestly. This movie is just absolutely a masterpiece. Hey guys, Future Zack here. So as I'm watching that in this video, I just realized I completely forgot Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> this is where it would be right here at number four. So move everything else up by one. I guess this is the top 11 list. All right, move everything else up by one. Guardians of the Galaxy number five, Spider-Man Far From number four. I don't know how I forgot about that. This movie is absolutely amazing. It is a complete masterpiece. I don't even know go. I don't even need to go over why it's amazing, but sorry about that. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this movie is definitely a personal favorite of mine. It's definitely up there for my most watched movies in the past decade or so. It is so good. Now, this is how humor should be done in a superhero film. Unlike those characters having always goofing. Those characters. <clears throat> unlike those. <laughs> That's all, folks. Unlike Thor, these characters have actually always been goofy and their screw ups. They screw around in serious situations. That's their thing. That's what makes them likable. It's so cool to see how the Guardians' relationship forms over the course of the movie, and everything flows so naturally. Lots of movies that aim to introduce five characters and have them be with their own um, backstory and their own actual like motives for why they're doing what they're doing. It usually doesn't work out too well. I mean, it usually flops. Just look at Justice League. That was a monstrosity. Anyways, though, this is one of the few Marvel movies that I can actually laugh at. And if I'm having a bad day, I can just put it on and enjoy myself. Because all these characters are so fun to follow. This man really challenged Ronan to a dance log to save the world. And it works so perfect. And the soundtrack, don't even get me started. Top 5 movie soundtracks of all time, hands down. I love this movie. I could talk about it all day, but for time, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Guardians of the Galaxy is fucking awesome. Number three, Logan. I remember the first time I saw this in theaters with my dad. It was the first and only time I've seen it, but it stuck with me even after all these years. I remember we both walked out of the movie theater in awe over how good it was. It was the perfect end to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and Patrick Stewart's Professor X. Though, he did come back in Multiverse of Madness. Back then, though, we were made to believe that this would be his last movie. And it was beautiful. I loved how action-packed and gory it was. It really made for a much darker and grittier Wolverine film. Wolverine is one of the best Marvel characters in my opinion, and it's so good to see him in such a fantastic film. Because, you know, the original Wolverine movie wasn't really all that good. But the story was amazing. I mean, I wasn't too familiar with the Old Man Logan comics back then, but when I saw, first saw the movie, but the story had one of the best I'd ever seen in the movie. The pacing, I think, was phenomenal. Like I said, it was so action-packed, straight to the punch, and I'm a big fan of action-based movies. One thing I cannot stand in superhero films is when there's barely any action. For a superhero film to be top tier to me, it needs to have good story, likable characters, a good villain, lots of action, emotional scenes. It doesn't have to be like super action-packed, but I don't like it when it has like none at all, you know what I'm saying? And it can make up for it in other ways, though, if it lacks those actions, as you'll see in my number two pick. Number two, The Batman. Everyone in my life, my friends and guys at work, they'd all seen this movie. Everyone was talking about it at work, and TikTok, and YouTube, and Instagram. I couldn't escape it. Everyone was saying how good it was, and I haven't seen it yet. And I finally got to see it literally four days before we went out of theaters. And I was blown away. I've never been on the edge of my seat waiting to see what was going to happen next as much as I have with this movie. And it was three hours long. I didn't even notice. Like, usually with these long superhero movies, I feel as though at least an hour could be cut from the each scene. And this movie, every scene felt necessary, you know? And I didn't even, like, have to piss my pants. Like, you know, these long movies, sometimes, like, you just feel like you have to explode. This movie, I didn't even think about that, though. Like, I really was just, like, so incredibly engaged in this movie that... I didn't even, I didn't even notice. Uh, but you can really tell that he, Robert Pattinson, he really killed in this role. You can really tell he tried hard to master Batman. Everything from the subtlety in his voice to how he slowly walks away from the shadows, it's so good. And Zoe Kravitz was the perfect as Catwoman. The Riddler was one of the best villains in any comic book movie ever. Like, he was absolutely terrifying. I didn't expect the Riddler to be that terrifying. Like, I actually, the Riddler is a very cool character. He's very, um, you know... He's always been a very cool character, but he's never really struck me as a character to be scary. You know, that was, like, terrifying, though. And I was like, shit, bro. Like, I actually felt, like, intense watching that. 
The Batman film is an absolute masterpiece. It is one of the greatest movies of all time, period. Not even just superhero films. And now for number one, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This was a tough choice between Batman and Spider-Verse, but I went with Spider-Verse. I absolutely love this movie. I actually first saw it in the theaters on a date, and it blew me away. Like, then I saw it again when it came on 4K, then I saw it again with an X, then I saw it again and again and again. I've seen this movie so many times. I would actually call this movie a cinematic masterpiece. I would actually call this movie one of the greatest movies of all time. Everything from the gorgeous animation to the character development to the relations between these characters and their dynamics to the colors. It only get me started on the soundtrack. I know they said about Guardians of the Galaxy. This movie has the greatest soundtrack out of any Marvel, out of any superhero movie, in my opinion. I mean, it's got Juice World, X, Lil Wayne. Like this movie has just such a great soundtrack. It is amazing, and it's actually so good that to this day I still listen to the soundtrack on Spotify. Sunflower, which is one of the most streamed songs of all time, so it, it's a great soundtrack. Um, the emotion in this movie and even the humor, it doesn't feel forced at all. I use, Like I said many times already, I usually don't like humor in Marvel movies, at least for the most part. It always feels so forced. But the humor in here just works so perfectly. And Miles and Gwen's relationship together it was so wholesome. And personally, even if my boy didn't get some pussy, like... I still think it's nice because they still friends. They stay friends. Like I actually think that works. Like not every movie needs to end with a guy getting the girl. But like this movie is so good. Like literally everything about this movie is good. If I were to say every single thing that's good about this movie, we would be here for hours. So I'm gonna wrap it up because this video is already 16 minutes long. But anyways, though, thank you for watching. And let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my picks and what you would put down for your top 10 best superhero films of all time, and I'll see you next time.